Okay, thanks for watching. What I'm going to show you today is a really cool tool called T-H-R-U-U-U, so it's called Through. It's by a guy named Samuel Schmidt, and I'll put a link to this tool uh, below and also to the uh, author's profile. I just found out about this today, and it's really, really amazing. It kind of em it does a lot of the stuff that Surfer SEO does, which is a paid tool, and it's I think it's like 60 bucks a month or something for a starter account, so it can get kind of expensive. This is free um, for, I believe it's 10 10 searches per month, but after that you can get credits, and I think it's 50 cents per search, so it's ridiculously cheap. Um, so this is amazing. So what this does, based on a keyword or a search query, it scrapes the SERP. So you know when you're building content, you want to see what Google comes up with, because you want to build your content around the things that, around the results that Google comes up with. So for example, if you're searching for why is the sky blue? and all the content pieces are between 800 and 1500 words, you probably want to get your content in the piece you write to be between 800 and 15 words because that's what Google's expecting. That's the theory. So let me show you. So let's go ahead. So the first thing you want to do is when you type it in, you probably want to create an account because you get, uh, it looks like access to some of the newest features. So you might want to do that and it's totally free. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in with me. I'm going to pause it. Okay, so I paused it while I log in, so I'm back. So after you log in, and again, you don't have to create a free account if you don't want to, but I would suggest it because it looks like you get access to the latest features. First thing I would do is watch this video. It's about three minutes long. And it goes over some of the basics. So what you do is just come here, go to Scraper, and let's say you want to do why is the sky blue. And you can filter it by the country. Um, you can do the language, how many uh, search results, desktop, mobile, include page performance. So this is stuff coming from White House, I presume. Um, so basically just scrape it. And this is really, really amazing. It's really, really powerful. Um, let me pause it Why this happens. Okay, we're back. So it uh, took about a minute to a minute and a half to complete, and that's expected. It's doing, I would assume, a lot of API calls, and it's doing a lot of stuff in the background. First thing you can do is export this if you'd like by clicking on download. So here's a good overview of what's going on. There's about 2 million results, an average of a thousand words per, per result. So that's keep that in mind. So generally what I like to do, if I see if the average is a thousand words, I generally like to do about 10 to 15% more. Now you'll hear different things from different people. And with the machine learning and stuff, it, it could be totally uh, not as important as it used to be. But I, I do like to do that. The average performance score from a performance point of view is 73. Um, the speed average or the speed score that comes from, I'm not sure if that's web page test. I guess that comes from Google Insights as well. Like I said, I just really found out about this tool, but I wanted to put this video out there. And each result has eight images on average. What I'm finding out is the more images and videos I put on pages, uh, they, they tend to rank better. Right now, nothing's guaranteed, right? We, we don't know how Google ranks things, but I'm just based on my experience. So let's look at the results. So you can filter by table view up here or grid view you can do a sorting by position word count etc so you can see here this is the top this is the um, results up top so this is the rich snippets up top um, then you can go to I'm assuming that's what that is one two because all these results come from different domains YouTube Khan Academy etc um, then you get down here and the, the, you can see this is three on this one card and this is one to one card. So it's a page. It has this one of all the results. This has the most images. And what it's interesting to see if there's a correlation at the more and more you play with this as the mo the results that have the most images, do those consistently seem to be at the top? And this one has the best performance. So that's really, really good. So the second, the third one, even though it could be the second one, depending on if these are rich results, uh, rich snippets, which I think they are, is the slowest and the least performance, which is kind of interesting. So you can kind of get a good overview here. You can go down here if you want to do, if you want to load more results. Now you can actually, in the fact that you can't do a drop down on here, Further tells me that these are the rich snippets, snippets, whatever you want to call it. So you can see here, this is really powerful. You can see the heading used, the H1 used on that page. Let me zoom in here. So this one's 705 words. It's not using schema. It's got 21 images. Now, if you go, you actually have to go to the page because a lot of that could be like thumbnails coming from related content, et cetera, et cetera. Links found. That's really cool. And you, can, what's really cool, well, all of it's really cool, but you can see the H1s 
and the H2s, right? So this is the first iteration of an H2. We'll get it. Why this is important, I'll show you this here in a little bit. So this is the first H2 on the page, sequentially, I should say. This is the second H2 on the page, and this is the third one that's found. What does this do? Okay, cool. So the H3s as well. Really, really cool. So this is the performance score, right? That's coming from the um, PageSpeed's Insights API, I would think. And this is the speed indexed index. And you can go down each result looking at that kind of stuff. So let's go to the top. Let's just have a look at the table view. So this actually, you can see all the words here. The word counts right here in a table view. I'm sure, I don't know if you can export this yet or not. It doesn't look like maybe you can't, but um, no big deal. Publication date, modification date, those aren't showing up. So that's probably something he's working on. Language, so I get one is probably English, right? So this basically is another way to view the data, just like a basic, you know, Excel spreadsheet. Now this is where it also gets really cool. You can see the titles of all the results here really quickly without the meta descriptions. Moving on, so you can see all the H1s here. So this is the first result here. This is its H1. So you can get a good idea. Look at the H1 for all of these top results. Why is the sky blue? 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 So use some common sense. The H1 on that page for you probably should say, why is the sky blue, right? Because that's every result in the top 10 has that in the H1. This is the same thing for the H2s. Now this goes back to my previous point. This is the first H2, I believe. Yeah, so this is the first H2 on the page. This is the second H2 on the page. This is the third H2 on the page. That's what these sections are, as I understand it, right? And I'm still learning this tool. And then the, this is interesting. So you can see this is the description shown in the search result, but this is the meta description given by the, the you know the person that created the web page. So it's interesting that Google didn't accept the meta description and created its own. And that's pretty much that's that's pretty common. Over here you can see the common keywords in the description. So this is all really, really, really good information. Keyword frequency for the meta descriptions. So these are keywords that I would focus my content around. When I'm creating content, I don't create content and then go back and modify it. I get like, you know, these, these headings and these questions and these keywords and I build my content around that. Let me go back and make sure I didn't miss anything. Keyword frequency for the titles, which is amazing. Keyword frequency for the headings, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the meta description. So this keyword stuff is is uh, represent it, it, keywords from the meta descriptions and the SERP description. Related search. So this is related search stuff. So this is all really good. That isn't, I don't believe people also ask. That's probably, I'm going to, I'm going to send him a message and maybe that's something he can add in there. And I feel bad to ask him to do stuff with as great as this tool is, but it's something uh, else he could possibly do. Videos, publish date, et cetera, et cetera. Let's keep going. And then perform it. So this is the Google Lighthouse stuff. So you can imagine the my my content creation when I'm going to put a video up for for it here shortly. It's called Qualify and Conquer. Half the process is qualifying content to see if it's something that you could have a chance of ranking for. Then the conquer part is actually doing it. So this is going to cut manually, probably and I don't know for sure, maybe 10 to 15 steps out of my process. So I've hoped you helped this, hope, hope this has helped you. I'm going to put a link to his Twitter profile in this page. So go support the guy because this is really, really amazing stuff.